Hey guys, Michelle from Michelle's Craft Corner here, and in today's video I'm going to show you how I colored the birds from the Stampin' Up! Bird Banter set using Stampin' Up!'s new blends markers. Now this is just the coloring tutorial video where I show you how I made, how I colored the birds for my Bird Z Fold card. If you want the full step-by-step -step tutorial on how to make this, do check out this separate video. Let's get coloring! So here's a close-up of that Z-Fold card and some of those birds that we're about to be coloring today. Now yet again, if you want the full tutorial on how to make this Z-Fold card, do check out my other video. And this one we're just going to talk about uh, coloring the individual birds with the blends. So for this, we of course are using the awesome Bird Banter stamp set. Wonderful one from the Occasions catalog. Uh, won't be sticking around forever, so if you love it, do go ahead and get it now. But only 17 bucks for all of these adorable birds. The other thing we're going to be using is the Memento ink. Now, anytime you're using the blends because they are alcohol based marker, it's recommended that you use the Memento ink to avoid um, blurring of your lines. So Right. And then, of course, the last thing we're going to be using is the blends markers and a whole lot of them. So you might as well just get the whole collection because you're going to love them. They're awesome. I mean, I, I have absolutely fallen in love with coloring them and it's so much fun. So, But if there are certain colors that you want, you can get them in uh, pairs or individual. So if you run out of a dark shade or a light shade, you can just get those as well. Right. And of course, all the product links will be at the bottom of the video. And last thing I get a question every so often is how do you store your blends? Uh, there's a lot of different ways you can do that. Demonstrators have a whole bunch of different ideas. But I absolutely love, and I'm sorry the camera zoomed in, I absolutely love this case I got off Amazon. And there will be a link in the section below. But what's nice about it is it has this nice Velcro section you can pull straight out. Let me show you real quick has little sections you can slide all of your markers in you can lay them flat on your desk and have them handy and easy to store I also like that it has a handy carrying strap so I can carry them with me so anyway if you're wondering how I store them that's how I store them all right so let's get to the coloring so I went ahead and I pre-stamped our birds on here with a example uh, colored and uncolored I'm going to walk you through them each at uh, one at a time. Now these, I figured out how to color them on my own via looking at pictures on Google. So I definitely do not claim to be a expert when it comes to using the blends markers or Copics or anything like that. So, um, <laughs> so these are just the way I have found that works well for me coloring them. The more you use them, you may have a way that works better for you. Okay, so what I did is I went ahead and I pre-stamped them yet again with my Memento ink. And this is just on Stampin' Up's Whisper White cardstock. You can use the thick or the regular, but either one that you use, you do want to have something underneath because they do bleed through. Um, so you want something to protect your work surface, like the grid paper or just some scrap paper just to keep that bleed through down. All right, so our first bird we're gonna start with is the hyacinth macaw. Uh, really beautiful bird, uh, known for its uh, bright blue and yellow coloring. And so for that, we're gonna be using the Daffodil Delight Trio, and then also the Knight of Navy uh, combo. Excuse me, not trio, combo. <laughs> so I always like to start with my lightest shade first, whichever is the lightest shade of that combo. So we're gonna do the light yellow. And so for him, we're gonna start with just doing a little bit of a yellow circle around the eye, and then a little bit of kind of a half circle, just kind of that bottom beak, just like that. Now, because it's such a small area, you don't necessarily have to add the second color if you don't want to but I kind of like to kind of give the edge just a little pop. So I'll kind of go over the edge with that darker shade and it just kind of helps that area to pop a little better. But as I said, you don't have to do that if you don't want to. 
and then always want to go back with the lighter shade and kind of blend those two lines together so they look a little seamless. All right, so we've got his eye and that little coloring. Now we're gonna go ahead to the Knight of Navy, yet again, starting with our lighter shade of the two. And these markers do have two tips, the, um, the pointy tip and the kind of broad blunt tip. Uh, personally, I have found for the birds that this uh, pointy tip is a little easier for some of these smaller areas of the birds, but you can use the other tip as well. Just be careful when you're coloring with these, oh, that cap doesn't want to get back on, okay, uh, that you're not poking straight down. You don't want to flatten that tip. You want to generally color from the side of the marker. So just a handy tip. Also, I wouldn't necessarily recommend the birds as a first blends project. I would start with something that's a little bigger of an image to kind of practice the blending. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and just color him with the lighter of the two shades of blue. Do my tail feathers here. It's really nice about the blends is if you do multiple lines, you just don't see those streaks. It just kind of all blends together. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and switch to my darker. And what I really love to do is just kind of give it a little bit of an accent. So I'm gonna take that darker blue and just draw a little bit of a line on the top of the tail. And then also kind of on the bottom edge and that top side of that bottom feather. And then I'm also going to do the same. I'm going to go around his wing just to kind of define it. Now, if you want, you can also kind of do some lines on those feathers as well to kind of accent it. And then I'm going to go back with my lighter shade again and just blend those two lines, kind of softens it up a little bit. Go all around the edge. Now I know it's a little hard to see with the dark blue. Hopefully you'll see by the time we're done. Okay, so you can kind of see it kind of made that wing pop. Now we're gonna continue coloring the rest of our macaw here. Going around that eye. sure I don't have any little white spots here and I made that circle a little bigger than the other one so I'm gonna add a little bit more to that but everybody's birds will be a little different and I'm gonna kind of that too okay and then yet again I'm gonna take that darker shade and just kind of give them a little bit of an outline along the top the bottom of the body around that wing a little bit more. I don't like to go too heavy with the darker shade. Then switch back to my lighter shade and blend that darker line into the lighter line. Just like that. So you can see it kind of makes it pop off the page a little better. So that's just the basics for doing the macaw. Now we're going to go ahead and color his beak real quick. And for the beak, I used the um, light smoky slate and the dark smoky slate. So we're going to start with our light shade yet again. Color that beak. Just go ahead and color the whole beak. Just like that. Then we're going to go ahead and switch to our darker shade. And we're gonna give it that little bit of an edge all the way around. If you go a little outside the lines, it's okay. You're gonna probably be cutting it out later anyway, so. Go around the bottom of the beak, okay. And then I'm gonna finish it off with the lighter smoky slate and just kind of blend those two lines. Now I don't wanna fill the whole thing out. I kind of want a little bit of that um, shadow reflection spot. So that is basic macaw, the hyacinth. All right, 
Now we're going to keep moving on. We're going to go to the Scarlet Macaw right here. Kind of the most common of the macaws. And this one, yet again, starts with our yellow. The, uh, excuse me, the Daffodil Delight. So for this one, I'm going to start with just that band of yellow on the wing. It's the lightest shade. And I'm just using that lighter shade of the Daffodil Delight. Now, if you want to add a little more darker tone, you can, but I'm just going to add that stripe first. Then we're going to go ahead and switch back to our Knight of Navy. And just like we did the macaw's tail and the tip of his wing, we're going to do the exact same thing. So really quick and easy. Just like that. And give it a little bit of that edge with the darker. And blending them together. Now you'll notice I tend to be really um, on top of keeping my markers closed if I'm not using them. No, they won't dry out that fast, but it is really good to get in the habit of always putting your caps back on if you're not actively using it. Uh, they will dry out if you do forget. Um, thankfully, they're easy to replace, but uh, you know, don't want to waste product if we can help it. So now I'm going to go ahead and add the red going along the top of the wing and then also the body. And this is yet again the lighter shade of that red. This is the uh, Cherry Cobbler. Which, I mean, he looks pretty just like that, nice and bright. But yet again, I want to go ahead and take my darker cherry cobbler and just give him a little bit more definition. So we're going to go around the top of the wing and the top of the head and that edge of the body. The side of the face, too. And if you want, you can also do like his little lines for his feathers on his chest. Switching back to the light shade, and we're just going to kind of blend those two lines together. Here we go. Alright, so still just kind of wanted to leave a little bit of that tummy, the lightest... Now for the macaws that I looked at online, most of them just had the bottom bit of the beak colored. So similar to the Hyson macaw, we're just going to do a little bit of that uh, smoky slate, the bottom, and then just a little bit of the edge, just to kind of make it pop a little. All right. There you go. So there is our Scarlet Macaw. So you can see these are pretty quick and easy coloring them this way. So now we're going to go on to our blue and gold macaws. Now I did these two different ways because I found more than one of these online. So uh, first one, we're going to yet again start with our yellow. Now this one's got a lot more yellow on the body than the previous one. So we're just going to kind of do the whole tummy with the lighter shade of the Daffodil Delight. And kind of go up the side of the face. Just like that. Okay. Then yet again taking that darker shade. Just going to give them a little bit of an edge. And then just blend those lines together. So, there we go. 
Then I'm going to go ahead and grab the old olive. Now he just has a teeny bit of old olive on the top of his head and just under his uh, beak area. So you don't need a lot. You can either do the lighter shade or the darker shade. It's such a small area. Um, you don't have to shade it if you don't want to. So there we go. Yeah, so that's what it would look like unshaded. So just a little pop of green. Now if you want just a little darker, we can take the darker shade of the old olive and just yet again kind of hit the top edge and kind of give it a little bit more definition. Okay. All right. Now we're going to go ahead and grab that Knight of Navy yet again and go ahead and do the rest of the body. Hopefully I'm not coloring too fast. I haven't done a lot of these coloring videos, so I would really appreciate you guys' feedback in the comments below what you think of this video. If everybody loves it, I will definitely do more. All right, so we've got our base yet again. We're gonna go ahead and grab our darker shade and just hit that edge. Now on um, these, I kind of did the top line for the edging. Oh, oh, accidentally drew that, I'll trim that later. Uh, but you can also just do the bottom line of the feather if you'd prefer kind of gives it a different look as far as the shading. So just another idea for you. And then yet again, blending those two lines together. For this one, we're just going from the bottom up, just like that. And I was a little messier up here, but as I said, I'm going to fussy cut this later. So if it's a little out of the lines, it doesn't bother me. Okay. And then we're going to go ahead and color the beak. So you guys are going to see a bit of a pattern with a lot of these colors. Just kind of blend that together. There we go. All right, and that is our basic blue and gold macaw. Now we're going to go on to our other blue and gold macaw. Now this one's got a little bit more of the lighter shade. So this is the Bermuda Bay on him. So it kind of just gives it a little, oh, excuse me, I'm shaking all the things, uh, just a little bit of a different look. I actually was looking online. I thought these were two different birds and then <laughs> looking up the names, it's, it's the same. Um, all right, so yet again, we're gonna start with our yellow, our light uh, daffodil delight. Now for this one, the yellow kind of went a little bit into the tail feathers as well. So just a little bit of the yellow down there. And then the whole tummy. A little bit on the side. Okay. And switch to our darker. Give it a little bit. Uh, okay. And then blending those two lines together just really softens it up. Okay, so we've got our yellow done. And hopefully you guys can see in the video kind of that uh, gradient pop on there. 
So now we're going to go ahead and do our Bermuda Bay. Uh, yet again, starting with the lightest shade. And there's not a lot of color on the tail, so I want to go really light because uh, there's just not a lot of room. So really light on the tail. Just a little bit of pop. And we're going to do the whole wing. Yeah, just such a beautiful color. Oh, I just love this shade. All right, and then yet again, he's got a little bit of a green uh, dot at the top, so we're going to leave a little space for that old olive. We're going to switch to our darker shade here. Kind of give it a little bit of an edge. Now, one thing that you may not notice, and hold on one second, let me blend this line in here with the lighter shade. Okay. Okay. One thing you may or may not notice on this one is that kind of outer line looks a little bit darker than this one currently. I know it's still drying for a second, but I'm going to show you what I decided to do because uh, to me it didn't look like it had enough pop. So what I did is I grabbed the light Knight of Navy, the shade of blue, and I kind of went around the edge and I gave it a little bit of that light blue pop. And it's a very, very subtle. I don't even know how well this is showing up in camera, um, but I think it really kind of added a little bit more definition to this guy. So that's another thing you can try with any of these birds. If you think it should be a little darker, you can try switching to a different color and seeing if that helps. All right, I don't know if you can see the difference in that, hopefully you can. My lighting a little bit. Nope, that made it worse. We're gonna leave lighting as it was, okay. <laughs> All right, and then we're gonna go ahead and add that little touch of the old olive both on the top of the head and under the neck. And you can just leave it like that, or if you want to just give it a little bit more definition, you can kind of give him a little bit of a darker line on the top, on the side. Okay. And now we're going to go ahead and do the beak. Now, for some reason in the pictures, this guy's beak always looked a little darker. So what I'm going to do is actually color the whole thing with the soft gray. Give it a second and then give it a whole second coat just to make it a little bit darker. And I don't know if that'll show up super well in the video that that one's darker than that one, but it is. <laughs> Alright, and then we're going to go ahead and yet again, you guys are getting the, the hang of this I'm sure. Go around that edge. And bottom edge just like that. And kind of blending it together, but I still want to leave a little bit of that reflection spot on there. Right, and so yet again, I kind of went a little bit out of the line, but that's okay. Also, we do have, and I did not grab it, oh, okay, uh, a color lifter. So if at any time you don't really like the look of something, you're too dark, you can always run over it with the color lifter and kind of pop it up a little. Now we're going to go ahead and move on to our toucan. And really, the more I looked, there really is only about one kind of toucan. So for this guy, we're using a little yellow, a little orange, a little bit of blue. Okay, first thing, just quick and easy. I really liked the look of giving him a blue eye. So we're just going to take the, the lighter shade of blue and just circle that. Now you will notice his eye pupil kind of disappears. And to kind of go with the cutesy look of this, I'm just going to take my journaling pen and just kind of give him a slightly bigger eyeball in the center. And I think it just kind of makes it pop a little bit better. 
Yet again, I'm not sure how well that's reading in the camera, but I, I think it looks better. All right, so now we're going to start with the beak, and we're going to go um, light to dark. So starting with our uh, light, daffodil to light. I'm going to add that on there. You want to go a little down a little lower than you think you need to because we're going to be blending on top of that yellow, so most of that's going to be covered. Then we're going to go ahead and add our darker shade. I'm just kind of blending up. Just like that. Now you'll notice that line seems pretty stark. So we're going to go back over it with the lighter and just kind of blend the two together and just soften that line up so it's a nice smooth gradient. Now we're going to go to our pumpkin pie. So starting with our light pumpkin pie, we're just going to add that on the bottom and go a little bit above the, the beak edge there. And then we're going to add our darker pumpkin pie. Now a little goes a long way, so we're just going to do a little bit on that bottom edge. Just like that. And yet again, blending over with the light. So you can kind of see that progression of light to dark. Now, if you want, you can also do a little bit of a, of a um, red line at the very bottom if you wanted to add a little bit of that cherry cobbler. Uh, but it's such a small area, it's, it's kind of hard to get it in there. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and move on to the body. And now their bodies are generally black, but it is really hard to do... A black body and still be able to see all this detail so we're just going to go dark with the grays so starting as always with our light we're just going to go ahead and color the whole thing with the light gray just like that all right so quick and easy give it a second i'm going to give it kind of a second hit with that dark gray Saturate it just a little bit more. Okay. And now we're going to go ahead and grab our darker gray. And I mean, he doesn't look bad without the, the texture as well. And we're going to go ahead and hit the edges on him. Just all the way around. And then going back over with my light shade, kind of blend the two lines together. Okay, there we go. So that's just our basic toucan. Pretty quick and easy. We are just moving right along here. So now we're going to move on to the cockatoo. Now your basic cockatoo does not have a lot of color on it. Um, the most popular ones tend to be the white ones, so very little coloring on that one. Uh, so basically the yellow of the top uh, feathers on the head. So we're just going to take our soft yellow and just color those little feathers. So simple. Now you could just leave it with the one color, uh, but if you want to, you can take the darker shade and kind of give it a little bit of an edge to one side so like the light is is hitting it and giving it a little bit of a shadow so but because it's such a small area it's really up to you so there's our top feathers and then we're just going to give him a gray beak and we're done so he is really quick and easy to make so gray beak and a little bit of an edge Boom. So, very quick cuck too. <laughs> Moving on. 
Uh, the other cockatoo that I saw a lot was a really pretty pink one. Uh, I don't know the species of this one, but it was just really pretty. Uh, so for this one, we're going to use the uh, light pink pirouette. Uh, and hopefully it's not too light. You can still see it on the camera. So we're just going to color his whole body with the light shade. Just like that. Including his little feathers up top. Okay. And then we're going to grab our darker shade. Now for this one, it had a little bit of a, a line across the top feathers, so I just kind of took the darker shade and just did a few dots just right across the middle there. I don't know if you can see that okay on the camera, hopefully. And then yet again, like we did with all the others, I'm just going to give it a little bit of an edge. Okay, that's a little more than I wanted, but uh, a little bit of an edge all the way around. And then we're just going to blend those lines together. Take our light one and just kind of give it a little soft blending there. There we go. All right. So there we have our basic cockatoo. I'm going to make him a little closer so you can see that. There we go. Okay. Yeah. Just that soft pink is kind of hard to see in the camera. And, um, his beak actually was white, so I'm going to leave that white, but of course if you want to make yours gray, you could. Now we're moving on to the cockatiel. Very, very popular bird a lot of people have. Um, fortunately, none of our birds look exactly like a cockatiel, so we're kind of making the turning the cockatoo into a cockatiel on this one here. Um, so for this one, I'm going to start with the little red dot on the cheek. Um, this kind of centers the face, in my opinion. Okay. Here we go. Uh, so we're just going to do that little dot just on the cheek. I'm going to be careful not to go too big on it. And this was with the lighter of the um, cherry cobbler. And then we're going to go back with our yellows. Now, depending on your cockatiel, I mean, some have more yellow, some have less, some have more gray. So, really do have to look at your reference picture, but this is just um, a simple version of that. So, for this one, we're only going to color the head yellow. We're just going to go around that red dot and just kind of get the head right there. And then also adding a little bit yellow to the top head feathers. And a little bit of an edge around the face. Just like that. And blending the two together. Okay. And now we're going to go to our gray. Starting with our light smoky slate. Just going to be sure that that line for the head is, is pretty straight. Now for some of them, they had some gray on their uh, head feathers. Some didn't, but I'm just going to add a little touch of gray on this one. And then yet again, giving it that little detailing edge around the outline. And this one, yet again, is another gray beak. So, give him gray, and then just give him a little bit of a pop. Now, the other tip I would say for doing um, this cockatiel is when you cut him out, I wouldn't cut out all the feathers. I would just do the first two or even one, uh, depending on your personal preference. 
I think it really does make it look more like a true cockatiel. Now I know we are kind of trying to make the cockatoo work, so he's a little bit pudgier uh, than he probably needs to be. But especially if he's on a card by himself, you won't have the comparison with, say, the size of the parrot. <laughs> but uh, that's how I would uh, do the cockatiel. Now we're moving on to our last bird group, the parakeets. And boy are these guys fun to color. Because they come in so many colors, I really recommend doing a Google search on parakeets. They really come in so many beautiful shapes, um, or different colors. Um, also affectionately known as budgies, which is a fun word to say. So for the first one, we're just going to do a simple light blue. And for this one, we're using the pool party combo. Starting with our light pool party, we're going to go ahead and color his body. Pretty much all of it, but I do want to leave a little bit of a white uh, circle around the eye. Um, this just kind of gives it a little bit more of a definition. Here we go. And now we're going to switch to our dark pool party, and hopefully this is not too light for the camera. And yet again, like we were doing with the bigger birds, we're going to do with the little ones. And just kind of give him a little bit of an edge all the way around with the darker shade. And I like to make the tail darker too, kind of pops it a little. And then we're going to just blend those lines together. And you do want a little bit of a reflection on the tummy and the wing. So pretty, pretty quick, pretty simple. Don't need a lot of colors if you're doing just kind of the simple colored parakeets. And then just for his little bitty beak, we're just going to do a little touch of the Daffodil Delight. Just the darker one right there on the tip. Or you can do the lighter. Either works. And that is our first parakeet. Let me put him up closer so you can see that. Yeah. Okay. Now, pretty much the same thing. Our next one is another beautiful shade of parakeet. Oh, this one's still in the box. Okay. This is the Rich Razzleberry which is just another beautiful shade. Love the raspberry. So starting this one yet again with the lighter of the two, we're gonna color the whole body. And just like the light blue one, I like to leave just a little bit of a circle around the eye, kind of make it stand out. Okay, then we're gonna switch to our darker shade. Just give him a little definition. Just like that. And then yet again, blending those two lines together. Okay. Here we go. We have our next basic little parakeet. Uh, now we're going to move on to the next one, which was the most common that I found when looking online. Most of the parakeets do seem to be very popular in the yellows and greens. So yet again, we're grabbing our Daffodil Delight out. Now depending on which bird, uh, some of them just had the whole head yellow, some had the head and the body. Uh, personal preference on that, I was just doing a little bit of both in this video so you can kind of see both, but we're going to basically do same thing yet again. That light yellow, a little bit of room for the eye. You don't want to go all the way out because we're going to save some room for the green. And then we're going to do a little bit of a V for the tummy here. Then grabbing our darker shade, give them a little bit of a definition just around the top and the edge. little blend on that. Very good. Now we're just going to switch to our old olive. Starting with our lighter shade. Okay. 
And then going with our darker shade. Then going back with the lighter and kind of blending those lines together. There we go. So now we have our next basic little parakeet. All right, moving on, two more left. The other one I saw a fair amount was this combination pink and gray one. Now this is a really good one for Valentine's Day or for like a special someone, both of these kind of are. So for this one, we're gonna start with our pink. Yet again, this is the uh, light pink pirouette. And we're gonna do the body and half of the head. Do the tail pink too. Okay. Switching to that darker. And blending those lines with the lighter. Okay, really quick and easy. Now we're on to our gray. Oop. The wrong cap on. There we go. There we go. Oh, and as always, don't forget to give them a little yellow for the beak. I'm realizing I missed a few beaks here. There we go. There we go. <laughs> All right, now we are on to our last one. And this one kind of looks to me like a bird of paradise, just the coloring, it's so pretty, the lovebirds. So we've got for this one, of course, the yellow yet again, uh, the pumpkin pie, the old olive, and we are actually gonna pull in the red on this one as well, the cherry cobbler. All right, so I'm gonna start with our, you guessed it, yellow. <laughs> Do that whole tummy yellow. And then just a little bit above kind of that headline. Switching to my darker shade, giving it that little definition line. Just a little bit up top. And a little blend on the tummy. All right, then we are done with the yellow. Moving on to the pumpkin pie. I'm going to start with our light pumpkin pie, just kind of getting a little bit on there, kind of pulling it across. Then we're going to take our darker shade of pumpkin pie, and I also did this for his beak as well, the darker, and then just a little bit along the top. This will bleed into the red. So then we're going to move on to our light cherry cobbler. And from where our orange meets, we're going to take that and move it on up to the top of the head. Just like that. All right, and this one I left a little bit more room for the green. I didn't leave a lot of room for the green right there, but and then I'm going to take my darker cherry cobbler and give him a little line across the top of his head. And yet again, blend that line together so it's nice and smooth. There we go. So 
So you see how quick that little ombre came together. And now we're going to finish it off with the old olive coloring his wing and his tail. We've got our light shade and then our dark shade. And just like that. And blending those edges together. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed my coloring tutorial. Here's I'm going to give you a close up of all the birds that we did real quick. Hopefully this isn't too blurry in the camera here. There we go. So there was our hyacinth macaw, our scarlet macaw. It's a little better. Okay. Our good old toucan. We've got our blue and gold macaw, both of them. <laughs> our cockatoo, the pink cockatoo. So you can see the lines a little better on his tail, top head feathers. Our cockatiels, our light blue parakeets. Our raspberry parakeets, the yellow and green ones, the pink and gray, and our multicolored little lovebirds. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed my video. Do let me know what you think in the comments below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. And do check out those Stampin' Up! blends. They are awesome, and I'm sure once you play with them, you will fall in love with them just as I have. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.